Hello and welcome to the Master the Elastic Stack course. All you need to get started with the Elastic Stack. My name is Ali and I will be taking you on this course from a beginner to someone who can install, configure and manage the Elastic Stack cluster. I work as a network and a security analyst and I have experience with the Elastic Stack that I would like to share with you so that you can avoid all the confusion and get started with analyzing and exploring your data. In this course, I will go through all the steps needed to get a functional Elastic Stack cluster running, starting from installing Elasticsearch and Kibana, securing the cluster, ingesting data into Elasticsearch, an overview of Kibana, uh, how to monitor the cluster and how to manage it, and setting up a fleet server and the Elastic Agent. There will be a lot of hands-on and as little as possible of slides, but in this introduction there will be some slides just to explain the concepts and what, and what we're doing in this course. The learning objectives and the goal of this course is to help you be able to set up a secure Elasticsearch cluster, ingest data with Logstash and FileBeat into Elasticsearch, uh, get insights into your data using Kibana, set up a fleet server and Elastic Agent and be able to monitor and manage your cluster. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about and explaining the components of the Elastic Stack or the ELK stack, ELK for Elasticsearch, Logstash and Kibana, and the two terms are interchangeable. The architecture of the stack, how it is used and the benefits of using it and some of its features. The first component of the Elastic Stack we're going to explain is Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is an open source search and analytics engine. It sits at the heart of the solution. You can install it locally on Linux, Windows, Mac OS, or on the cloud, and it stores data to be queried very quickly. Storing data is called indexing with Elasticsearch and it does it in its own way so that data can be retrieved very fast. Um, as an example, you store or index uh, millions of DNS events or logs and you can search queries to a specific domain and uh, maybe the number of IP addresses querying that domain and you will get results back very fast. Logstash is the next component in the Elastic Stack. It is an open source data ingestion service. It can parse and transform data and then uh, from one source or multiple sources and send it to Elasticsearch for indexing. We'll go through the process of installing Logstash and ingesting data into our cluster later in the course. The KNLK stack stands for Kibana. It is the component that allows you to see the data in the stack and be able to visualize it and create dashboards so you can analyze and make sense of your data. It is the GUI interface that allows you to run search queries, reports, monitor the cluster and manage it all from the Kibana interface. Beats are the extra component that complement the stack. They are data shippers that can be installed on servers or workstations to send the logs from those servers to Elasticsearch or even to Logstash for extra processing. Beats are single purpose, that means there are specific types of beats for specific types of data. For, for example, if you want to monitor uh, the logs on a system, you install file beat. If you want to monitor metrics, you install metric beat. And there are different types of beats for different types of data. These products all together are what is called the Elastic Stack. They all work together as a stack. Now moving on to the architecture of the stack. When you're planning on deploying the Elastic Stack, I think the best way to deploy it is on a local server in a lab environment, and then start ingesting data from the sources you want to monitor, and then see how much data you are adding per day, uh, per week, or per month, and then you can start planning on the size of the hard drives and the data uh, retention period, but uh, a lot of planning goes into the design and the architecture. Uh, here's a quick list of things you need to keep in mind. 
Uh, is it going to be a local deployment or on the cloud? The number of nodes, there are types and there are specifications. Uh, is it going to uh, be a free license or a paid license for the extra features and support and the retention period for your data? So what can you use the Elastic Stack for? These are the four areas you are introduced to when logging into the cluster for the first time. The first area is search. You can power your websites with Elasticsearch to make results uh, quicker and more relevant to the users. The second area is observability. This is where you can monitor all the logs and metrics from all the data sources. The third is security. The stack can be used as a SIM, security information and event management uh, to detect and respond to threats. It allows visibility into your environment, um, has many pre-built machine learning detection rules, and with AI-driven analytics, uh, it makes Elastic Security a, a great SIM. The fourth area is analytics. This is where you can create visualizations and dashboards and maps and machine learning jobs uh, to be able to get insights into your data and analyze and search for the answers you need. And what are the main benefits of using the Elastic Stack? Well, it is, first of all, highly scalable. If you need to add more data, you just add more nodes and it is resilient. The data is always replicated between the nodes. It is highly available if a node goes down, data is available from another node. The search is fast. The way Elasticsearch indexes the data makes retrieval of the data uh, super fast. It is cost effective. It's a, an open source product. You can use it for free. And the main cost is the hardware to store the data. And even if you decide to subscribe for a paid license, uh, you'll get support and you'll get extra features that are worthwhile. Uh, it has alerting capabilities, so you can get alerted on important events in the cluster. Uh, data communication is secure between the nodes of the cluster and between the data sources and the cluster itself. And it allows for a lot of customization. You can ingest data into the cluster in many different ways and you can transform the data however you want. And finally, the features of the Elastic Stack. There are many features in the Elastic Stack, but the ones that I have used, and I think they allow you to have a great solution for your environment are uh, the data storage and the quick search, uh, visualization of your data for a quick understanding of what's going on in your network. You can use machine learning jobs and you can create custom machine learning jobs and also use it for detection of uh, threats and protection of your uh, environment. This was an overview of the Elastic Stack. We went through the definition of each component and some concepts and what it is used for and the benefits. Up next, setting up Elasticsearch and Kibana. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next one.